March 17th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, John chapter 8 from the New Testament. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning, he came to the temple courts again. All the people came to him, and he sat down and began to teach them. The experts in the law and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught committing adultery. They made her stand in front of them and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone to death such women. What then do you say? Now they were asking this in an attempt to trap him so that they could bring charges against him. Jesus bent down and wrote on the ground with his finger. When they persisted in asking him, he stood straight up and replied, Whoever among you is guiltless may be the first to throw a stone at her. Then he bent over again and wrote on the ground. Now when they heard this, they began to drift away one at a time, starting with the older ones until Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus stood up straight and said to her, Woman, where are they? Did no one condemn you? She replied, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, I do not condemn you either. Go, and from now on, do not sin any more. Then Jesus spoke out again, I am the light of the world. The one who follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So the Pharisees objected. You testified about yourself. Your testimony is not true. Jesus answered, Even if I testify about myself, my testimony is true, because I know where I came from and where I am going. But you people do not know where I came from or where I'm going. You people judge by outward appearances. I do not judge anyone. But if I judge, my evaluation is accurate because I am not alone when I judge, but I and the Father who sent me to do so together. It is written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I testify about myself and the Father who sent me testifies about me. Then they begin asking him, Who is your father? Jesus answered, you do not know either me or my father. If you knew me, you would know my father too. Jesus spoke these words near the offering box while he was teaching in the temple courts. No one seized him because his time had not yet come. Then Jesus said to them again, I am going away and you will look for me, but will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jewish leaders begin to say, Perhaps he is going to kill himself, because he says, Where I am going, you cannot come. Jesus replied, You people are from below, I am from above. You people are from this world, I am not from this world. Thus I told you that you will die in your sins, for unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. So they said to him, Who are you? Jesus replied, What I have told you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge about you, but the Father who sent me is truthful, and the things I have heard from him I speak to the world. They did not understand that he was telling them about his Father. Then Jesus said, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, and I do nothing on my own initiative, but I speak just what the Father taught me. And the one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone because I always do those things that please him. While he was saying these things, many people believed in him. Then Jesus said to those Judeans who had believed him, If you continue to follow my teaching, you are really my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. We are descendants of Abraham, they replied, and have never been anyone's slaves. How can you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, I tell you the solemn truth, everyone who practices sin is a slave of sin. The slave does not remain in the family forever, but the son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be really free. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you want to kill me because my teachings make no progress among you. I am telling you the things I have seen while with the Father. As for you, practice the things you have heard from the Father. They answered him, Abraham is our father. Jesus replied, If you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the deeds of Abraham. 
but now you are trying to kill me, a man who has told you the truth I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You people are doing the deeds of your father. Then they said to Jesus, We are not born as a result of immorality. We have only one father, God himself. Jesus replied, If God were your father, you would love me, for I have come from God and am now here. I have not come on my own initiative, but he sent me. Why don't you understand what I'm saying? It is because you cannot accept my teaching. You people are from your father, the devil, and you want to do what your father desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not uphold the truth, because there is no truth in him. Whenever he lies, he speaks according to his own nature because he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I am telling you the truth, you do not believe me. Who among you can prove me guilty of any sin? If I am telling the truth, why don't you believe me? The one who belongs to God listens and responds to God's words. You don't listen and respond because you don't belong to God. The Judeans replied, Aren't we correct in saying that you are a Samaritan and are possessed by a demon? Jesus answered, I am not possessed by a demon, but I honor my father, and yet you dishonor me. I am not trying to get praise for myself. There is one who demands it, and he also judges. I tell you the solemn truth, if anyone obeys my teaching, he will never see death. Then the Judeans responded, Now we know you are possessed by a demon. Both Abraham and the prophets died, and yet you say, if anyone obeys my teaching, he will never experience death. You aren't greater than our father Abraham who died, are you? And the prophets died too. Who do you claim to be? Jesus replied, If I glorify myself, my glory is worthless. The one who glorifies me is my father, about whom you people say he is our God. Yet you do not know him, but I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him, and I obey his teaching. Your father Abraham was overjoyed to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then the Judeans replied, You are not yet fifty years old. Have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, I tell you the solemn truth before Abraham came into existence. I am. Then they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out from the temple area. God, one of my favorite times in the Bible is when you talk about being the light of our world, because it's such a, a very visual imagery for me. When Jesus says, I am the light of the world, the one who follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And he's talking about obviously quite a few things. He's talking about himself. He's talking about uh, forgiveness. He's talking about eternal life. But I also like the imagery that we don't ever have to walk in darkness. That if there's people listening right now who think that they are in darkness um, and they are followers of you, that honestly can't be true. And we'll talk about that in just a second. But if they aren't followers of you, asking your son into their lives so that they can start walking a path, start creating a relationship, start following him um, and the amazing life that you have set before us, then they can also walk in light as well. One of the amazing things to me is if you have a room of light, any type of light whatsoever, dim light, really bright light, it honestly doesn't matter. But if you have light and you try and inject darkness into that light, it is impossible because the light always wins. It's really easy because right now I'm sitting in a room that's lit from outside. Uh, the sun is out, the room is bright. And yet if I try and create darkness in my hands, if I, if I cut my hands and I peer in there, there's darkness, but the light still seeps in to the darkness. But the opposite is true as well. If I'm in a pitch black room, if somehow I've been able to create a room where absolutely no light can get in whatsoever, it's pitch black. And in my hands, I hold a little tiny flashlight then no matter how much I try to keep the room pitch black and live in darkness, that light is still going to seep out of my hands. So if you, if you live in, in the light, the light seeps into the darkness and overtakes it. 
If you attempt to live in the darkness, the light will overcome the darkness as well. That is one of the reasons that I love when you talk about being the light of our, our, our world, the light of our life, the light within our heart, because it's so true. You overcome everything in our life. You take care of everything in our life and there's really no darkness in our life. There's a perception because we're living in the moment and that moment right then is really painful and really dark, possibly even very lonely. And today, God, I just pray that we allow the light to come in. You control all of that, God. You control what happens to us. You control what doesn't happen to us. You control how much light we can see right now. You also control how much darkness we can see right now. Please don't let us add to that. Please allow us to be not in control of that and allow you to be in control of what happens with those situations. Allow us to be obedient in those situations. You know that we're in, in pain. You know that we're hurt. You know that we're sad. You know that we're devastated in those situations. And I know you're probably more upset for us than we are, if that's even imaginable. But still, allow us to be obedient in the path that you have set before us so that not only can your light shine within us, but then we can be a light to the world for you by telling others about your amazing faithfulness and your incredible, boundless love. In your son's name we pray. Amen.